Greetings and salutations. This is Imperata Vespasian bringing you a Lehman Russ. Now, I wouldn't normally bother doing a video on a vehicle, unless it's like a really specialised vehicle that you don't really see in the game much. But Lehman Russes are pretty much standard, it's like Land Raiders. Um, I don't mind doing a video on um, the Land Raider Crusader because that's a much different version than the standard Land Raider. But uh, this is the standard weapon in the Imperial Guard. This is every Imperial Guard regiment sports things like this. Uh, this is the standard pattern Lehman Russ as well. It has heavy bolters, last cannon at the front, battle ca standard battle cannon on top. And this is the standard vehicle of the Imperium of the Imperial Guard. These these things are ten a penny. There are thousands of Lehman Russes available to the Imperial Guard. And it, it, it's just so standard, it's unbelievable. Um, I've put the um, forced induction thing on the back, so you know, it's got a bit of a bit of engine, but other than that, it's a, it's a standard Lehman Russ pattern battle tank. Uh, Lehman Russ himself, apparently the guy found it, uh, found the standard template construct to it, and it became the standard weapon as used by the Imperial Guard. There's many versions of Lehman Russ. Um, I'm just talking about the standard turret version Lehman Russ. There's also a version of Lehman Russ you can get without any side sponsons, without these things on. But you've got the standard version and then a selection of different guns. Um, you've got a heavy howitzer for blasting bunkers and stuff like that. You've got a much better anti-tank weapon which is a, a longer barreled version of this. And you have a... Um, what is it? Is it flame cannon? Something like that. And uh, of course there's a plasma version that fires as well. So um, you've got all sorts of sort of weapons you can equip the Lehman Russ with. Um, I wanted to be as standard as possible and not try and be clever and give the tanks all sorts of different arrangements and stuff. And also, given that I've only just started collecting this army, this is the only tank I have for it. Yes, I know. I'm, I'm doing... Um, Steel Legion, and I only have one vehicle. That's 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 because I've only just started collecting it. So don't 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 shout at me. Um, so I'm going to have a full squad of these standard battle tanks in standard configuration, just as they're supposed to come. These are the standard tank, just just like just as they come out of the production line, they all come out looking like this. And I may add something with some sort of demolition cannon on it in order to take out enemy heavy positions. So one per unit and that's about it. I might, I might also have the, one of the longer barreled versions of this to give my squad a little bit more anti-tank ability. Um, in real life, in tank units, um, you didn't tend to get, um, in the, the American army, the British army, you didn't tend to get the um, a whole squad of tank destroyers, sort of heavy heavy gun things. Most guns, most tanks were armed with the equivalent of this, which is the battle cannon. Um, it's not an anti-tank weapon particularly. It's a weapon for demolishing masonry, so taking out bunk taking out small bunkers and blowing soldiers up, and taking out machine guns and things like an artillery. That's what it's for. It's not really designed to take on enemy tanks. And one of the tanks in a, in a unit, I think there's seven tanks in an American unit, three, three in a British unit, or four in a British unit, um, you would have one that had an actual anti-tank gun. Because it was very seldom you ever came across an enemy tank. So um, mostly tanks are dealing with infantry, for the most part. Um, obviously there were situations and battles where it wasn't true, but I'm going back to World War II now, and... Um, so most tanks did not um, were standard tanks. So your standard Sherman, right, or your standard uh, Churchill, they did not carry anti-tank guns. Your standard Sherman carried a seventy-six millimeter how it uh, uh, not how it's a, a, a field gun, a, a seventy-six millimeter gun which was capable of um, taking out enemy soft skin vehicles and and. Tyranids and uh, large numbers of Tyranids and Tyranids hiding behind cover. Uh, mainly that's what it was designed for. 
and also they did carry a um, the, the standard deployment for the American Army was to carry one high explosive and tank round. So you may see in data sheets and, and, and things when you're doing gaming that your tank has a high explosive anti tank round you can fire, an anti tank gun. Uh, in reality, American tanks were issued one round. One round. And the British Army, if they had them, they took them. Uh, it was not standard issue. Um, if the tank crew arrived at a depot and found a couple of heat rounds knocking around, they would pick them up and put them in their tank. Um, normally they wouldn't be carried. So when you see these films where you've got American tanks taking on um, German tanks, um, the American tanks will get one shot. And most of the time you're firing high explosive rounds which will do nothing to an enemy tank. Um, I've, so I've, I've gone with that theory for this 40k army. Because it is a standard army, I want it to be a standard army looking a little bit modern in its, in its design. So mostly we're going to go for the standard gun. So as it's a standard vehicle, I'll go through the standard vehicle. Um, so we have twin heavy bolters, or one heavy bolt on each side, they fire independently. Uh, then we have the standard battle cannon, I like that, it's a, a heavy D6, 72 inches, that's it's going to get anywhere on the table you want and it's going to be able to damage anything you really want to shoot at. Strength 8, um, only minus 2 AP so it's not an anti-tank gun by any means. <coughs> you could use it as an anti-tank gun but with minus 2 AP you want something minus 3 AP to your best um, unless you're going against light vehicles. And as I said with the Sherman, this is basically a Sherman. This a Sherman will be able to take out a uh, orc and a mag any day. You'll be able to take out a, a, a light vehicle, a walker, something like that. You'll be able to take those things down quite easily and just like this tank will. But if you come up against something heavy like a land raider or something, um, you're going to have difficulty. You're going to be up against it. And it's only got minus 2 AP against the land raider which has additional shielding and stuff. Some of them have additional shielding. Um, it's not good. It's not good. Uh, so you're going to want something with more oomph. So one of these in the squad will have the long anti-tank gun, which will be used for taking out those single dangerous enemy targets. Um, but mostly it's going to be used for clearing enemy infantry and enemy space marines. That's what it's for. And boy, do we have a lot of enemy space marines to fight. Um, damage D3. Again, targeting space marines every time. Just, just go for the space marines. And then it has something that actually can do pretty good damage to tanks, and that is the last cannon. This is your backup weapon, you just here, on the little moving sponsor. Um, this is what gives your tank the anti-tank ability. Your downside is it's quite low in the hull, and you have to be aiming at the target. Um, this can actually fire at anything without any med penalties. Uh, this is actually a whole mounted weapon. So you have to move your vehicle to aim at the target. Bit of a downer. Could get annoying. Um, but it does give you that anti-tank ability. It's, it's a last cannon. It's like getting an old World War One tank. Although this one's got a turret. So, you know, World War One tank with a turret. And giving it an actual anti-tank gun in the hull. Um, so this is the standard weapon it carries. This is for emergencies. It's for taking out enemy heavy armour. So that's strength 9, which is awesome, and uh, minus 3 AP, which is awesome, D6 damage. So that will take on the enemy tank. Your downside is you only get one of them, because so you don't have the heavy battle cannon. Uh, also, the heavy battle cannon does more damage than the last cannon. And um, you don't get two shots, you only get the one, the one shot. Uh, this one, you're stuck with the standard battle cannon. So it, it's as standard as I could possibly get. I just wanted it to be a standard tank. Um, I could go all through all the different types of Lehman Ross. Um, I, you already know if you play Imperial Guard and you're probably not interested um, and you, it, it, it's complex. Um, the good thing is you have grinding advance. Uh, your turret weapon is unaffected by movement, which is what I mentioned earlier. Um, your, your turret can move and fire. This is whole mounted, so it can. Um, 
and it has industrial efficiency. Um, now the industrial efficiency for um, tanks for the shock troops is, is different from the last firing large amounts of last fire. The industrial efficiency says that any weapon with an armor value, armor penetration value of minus one is reduced to zero. And that means you've got slightly amounts of additional armor. So technically this tank can be taken out by a light weapon with an AP uh, minus one, AV minus one. Um, so that could be embarrassing if your tank got taken out by that. But what you do is, is if something fires at you with an AP, AV minus one, it's reduced to zero. So it makes it, so your tank will be more or less immune to um, sort of light weapons fire that could technically take out a tank. So that, that's a useful skill. That's a very useful skill to have. So I think that's about it. Um, leave any comments in the comment section. Uh, please click like if you like the video and share if you feel like it. So this has been Imperativist Bayesian. Goodbye.